Well, I hope you guys don't mind, but I do have notes on my phone, and I'm also controlling a presentation from my phone, so if you see me holding it, looking at it, I'm not texting anyone, <laughs> I promise. Um, hello. <laughs> my name's Jeremy. Uh, I'm a senior in uh, the journalism major. I'm a visual media emphasis, uh, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about photojournalism in the wedding industry. <clears throat> I plan to graduate in the fall of 2017 this year, uh, in December, and if you haven't already realized, today we're going to be talking a lot about marriage and love and all of that junk. Just kidding, on the junk part. Um, I have been doing wed wedding photography for about three years now, and I've been pr practicing photography for about six. I've had the benefit of learning from people who are way smarter, way better, and way more capable than I am. My first mentor was Cameron Alabaria, who is a full-time wedding photographer in Seattle, Washington. Uh, I've known Cameron for almost three years now, and she gave me my, my first start in the wedding industry. My second uh, mentor that is someone that you may know is Mike Villa. He is a Biola grad. He's an Orange County wedding photographer. He owns what is now Villa Visuals. And in my uh, most unbiased opinion, he is one of the best out there. Uh, before we get started, um, how many of you in this room are married? Anyone married? Cool. Now, how many of you in this room are wanting to get married someday or know someone who is married or wants to get married? Hands? Perfect. It's all of you. That's exactly what I was expecting. <laughs> I have talked to a lot of married people over my career, and I have learned one thing from talking to brides and grooms. The wedding day is a big blur. Seriously, most people don't even remember much from their, from their day, other than the last bit of their ceremony when they said their vows, or crazy dance moves your uncle had that you didn't know and that you don't really ever want to see again, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Wedding photographers give you access to all of those memories that you forget throughout the day. All of those little moments that didn't stick in your mind, that's our job. They do it with a dash of style as well. We'll be taking a look at how photojournalism relates to wedding photography and what different styles and trends are popular today. And we'll discover if the photojournalist makes the best wedding photographer or not. I'll give you one hint. They're very good at what they do. So. Keep that in mind. The story is king, so also remember that. <coughs> Merriam-Webster defines photojournalism as journalism in which written copy is subordinate to pictorial, usually photographic presentation of news stories or in which a high proportion of pictorial presentation is used. It's a lot of words, it's a mouthful, I'm sorry. Uh, essentially, photojournalists tell a news story through pictures. That's what it all boils down to. They capture the wide overall scene. On the left, it, you, on your left, you have uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson, uh, a photo of women spreading out saris. On the right, you will see a wedding photo of an elopement on a mountaintop captured by Benj Haish, who is a Northwest wedding photographer. They also capture the important medium photos that show a lot of emotion on the left is a photo by James Noctway, uh, and on the right is a photo by Nicola Ross. And lastly, they capture close-ups of all these intrinsic details of the day, um, sometimes beautiful portraits like this one on the left by Martin Scholler, and on the right uh, by India Earle, who is a wonderful wedding photographer uh, based in Utah. Photojournalism is about capturing what tells the story best, and that's exactly what our clients in the wedding industry expect us to do. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. This one's by me. As wedding photographers, it is our, ex is our responsibility to capture every single aspect of the day. If there's anything that can help tell the story in any way, you can bet that a wedding photographer is going to be there to capture it. Even it's just like a small hairpin or something. I've done tiny, tiny details. I would go so far as to say wedding photography is a type of photojournalism. 
This is again by me uh, in Merced, California. And lastly, I would say that some would be hesitant to accept <laughs> this statement that uh, wedding photography is a type of photojournalism. Because there are so many different aspects and types of wedding photography, uh, which is absolutely true. You see, there are many different types of wedding photographers, each with their own style. Some go big, like this one in Malibu Rocky Oaks. However, because of social media outlets like Instagram and Pinterest, a couple of styles have become more popular over others. I'm going to break each of these up into categories and then explain what they truly mean. But first, let's talk about some wedding trends. So in 2016, Brides Magazine did a study uh, and they found a number of interesting things, actually. Um, the results of the American Wedding Study of 2016 demonstrates that more than ever, couples prioritize personalizing their wedding as they are choosing to spend more money in details that demonstrate their specific style. Now, the interesting thing is because of tools like Instagram and Pinterest, we can analyze trends in couples' personal style. I per put air quotes over personal because not everyone is as you know, different in the style uh, that they may choose to portray as they may seem because popular trends are a big indicator of that. We can actually analyze the most popular styles that people choose for themselves and identify with and then uh, spread out data like brides did in their research. The annual wedding today costs, or the average wedding today costs $26,522. Uh, I can tell you in Los Angeles and California in general, it is a lot more than that, actually, because this is wedding central. Um, and the average amount spent on a photographer, a wedding photographer, is $2,099. Again, in Southern California and the LA area, it's a lot higher. <laughs> uh, keep these numbers in mind as we delve into this next part. We can look at two shooting categories in the realm of coverage. Uh, coverage is that fancy word that photographers use when talking about photographing an event. And side note, it's not that fancy. It just means getting all the things that you need photographically at your event. There are more than two categories that we can talk about uh, in wedding photography. But I'm going to stick to uh, these two for now because of time and also your personal sanity. On one hand, we have what most people refer to as the journalistic style coverage. This looks more like documenting exactly what's happening in a moment uh, without trying to influence it in any way. Journalistic style photo photographers will let events unfold, do their best to capture the moment, be in the right place at the right time, etc. This is a great way to photograph events because you can focus more on the moment. However, sticking strictly to journalistic coverage leaves out the opportunity to create some really incredible portraiture. This is where our second category kind of differs. Fine art coverage will, where wedding photographers will purposefully move things out of the scene. Actually, I have been told that in a hotel room, what fine art uh, photographers will often do is tell the bridal party to schlep everything into a corner that is not pretty. And we call that, obviously, the corner, very affectionately, because we don't want to shoot an ugly scene. We want everything to be beautiful and artistic and uh, amazing looking. They'll light things creatively to their, ex to their specifications and will create the most uh, artistically beautiful kind of photographs that they can uh, of whatever they're covering. They typically engage more in the day. They're more direct with the couple. They have more uh, contact with them. And uh, like I said, there are more styles of coverage than just these two. Uh, however, these are the most relevant types of coverage to this presentation, so we're just going to stick with that. Journalistic style wedding photography is absolutely not the best uh, way to cover a wedding. And art coverage is definitely not the best way either. I personally find more of a mix is, is uh, where coverage should lie. Finding more of a journalistic style and capturing all of the moments whereas also capturing beautiful portraits and creatively making images. <clears throat> Let's look at some examples. So these two photos are by Jeremy Chow. Um, we can narrow it down from coverage and identify two popular styles of editing, actually, that seem to dominate wedding scenes nowadays. 
Uh, obviously, there are more than two styles out there, of course. Um, but we're only going to focus on these two. And interestingly enough, both of these digital uh, editing styles are replications of film coloring. Our first style is light and soft, as you can see here. It's very bright and, and inviting and, and beautiful. Uh, whereas our next style is more dark and, and moody and still beautiful. These types of fine art photographers are typically charging from anywhere from uh, four to around 8,000 per wedding, depending on their business model. Uh, these, are t these type of weddings are typically associated with more luxury wedding photographers, and that can be seen through their dresses, their ties, the way that they move, the way that people pose, all of that kind of plays into that. This is another example of uh, a fine art, more light and, and blush colors, and just really, really beautiful and bright. And I think we have one more yet. This is by Richard Lander. Uh, he runs Charred Photo. He's an awesome Southern California wedding photographer. As you can see, it's, it's warm and just gorgeous, beautiful light. Everyone looks perfect. Our next style, like I said, is a little bit more darker, more moodier. This is from an engagement session that India Earl did. Again, she's that Utah-based photographer. As you can see, there's a lot more darkness, more contrast to the shadows. It still has that warm tone to it, but it's, it's just darker. There's more mood to it. Some of these are really trendy looks. India is actually a very in-demand photographer right now because of interest, uh, Instagram and Pinterest. So these types of wedding will cost anywhere from two to about $5,000, depending on the photographer's business model. This is another example of, from India. She, this is in Joshua Tree, um, and she did this elopement. And last, we have a photo by Lauren Apel with this beautiful window light coming in on the bride. Just very moody and awesome. The key thing about these editing styles is that many photojournalists would not dare edit in this way. And I think that's for good reason. News photojournalists will rarely mess with the color or the integrity of the scene. And the bottom line is they'll never intrinsically alter a photograph. And for good reason. I mean, this is where I must draw some sort of metaphorical line in the blurry photography sand. Uh, this is the point at which photojournalists and wedding photographers kind of come to a fork in the road. You see, I would not want my news photos to be edited in this way, where we have crushed highlights, a lot of grainy, dark, moody, black and whites, uh, just because I think that takes away from the photo. As well as this style. I mean, I would not want to see my news photos edited in such a way that's light and beautiful and airy. That just seems kind of backwards. Along with that, the integrity of a news situation is of the utmost importance, and photojournalists are tasked with preserving that photographically. There's no way that we should be messing with that ethically. But on the flip side, <laughs> see what I did there? It flipped. Wedding photographers should strive to create the most beautiful images possible in whatever way they choose to interpret the world. And if that means that moving things in a scene or posing people in a certain way or lighting in a creative way or whatever it may be, then I think that they should absolutely do that and absolutely should have the right to do that. Finally, it's my belief that news photojournalists have the ability to make the best wedding photographers because they have this innate sense of needing to be at the right place at the right time. However, in order to be successful wedding photographers, photojournalists need to let go of some of their training and maybe introduce some of these editing styles into their repertoire so as to cater to the more modern bride and groom. That is where you'll find me after Biola. <laughs> at least for a period of time. Navigating a, the blurry path of photojournalism and fine art wedding photography, I think Biola has prepared me well for one side, and I've been working on the other for three years now. Today, actually, in fact, I'm going to be doing a wedding, my first wedding of the season, uh, in about two hours is when I leave, so <laughs> wish me luck. But before I leave, I'd like to answer any questions that you guys may have. First, thank you. <laughs>